Here we're going to solve a nice system of equations over the integers. So our goal is to find all x, y, and z, which are integers, such that x plus y plus z equals 3, and x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals 3. Maybe before we get started, I want to notice that here we've got this like system of two equations and three unknowns. And actually, this would be a pretty interesting like algebra, algebra geometric question if we were taking x, y, and z maybe in the real numbers or the complex numbers or like algebraic geometers often do in the complex projective space. But that, that's not what we're doing here. We're looking over the integers. Okay, we're going to use two tools in order to solve this. And they're both fairly elementary, but we will check them. And one of them is if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides AX plus BY, where X and Y are any integers. So let's go ahead and show that first. So we'll suppose that D divides A and d divides b and notice that that means that a equals d times r and b equals d times s and that's got to be true for some r s which are integers that's just the definition of divisibility now the next thing that we'll do is look at the expression ax plus by so let's take ax plus by and notice we can write that as drx plus dsy. We can go ahead and factor a d out of that. Notice that's equal to d, rx plus sy. But the fact that we were able to write ax plus by as a multiple of d, that's equivalent to saying that d divides ax plus by. So in other words, we've established this first tool. So we're gonna establish one more tool and we'll be a bit more hand wavy with it. And that is if you take any integer n and you cube it, you only have three possibilities. You can be congruent to zero mod nine, one mod nine, or negative one mod nine. And this is the notion of cubic residues. There are only so many cubic residues modulo whatever. Now, that notion isn't as well known as quadratic residues. Oh, and by the way, I've got a playlist for quadratic residues that's built into my number theory course if you guys are interested in that, but it's still out there. So, but we're gonna just check this by like calculation. So what I wanna do is first realize that I only need to take n values from zero to eight because I can perform all of my calculations modulo nine in the first place. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take values of n. Like I said, they only need to go between zero and eight. So I have zero, one, two, three, four. But now instead of using five, I'm gonna go ahead and use negative four. Notice that negative four is gonna be the same thing as five mod nine. And since we're working mod nine, that's all that we need. And then negative three, negative two, negative one. So you could also read this off as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Great, and like I said, we're working mod nine, so we only really need to worry about those. Now, next thing that I'll do is I'll calculate n squared and then n cubed, and I'll reduce mod nine at every step. And I'm gonna do this in two steps just because uh, you know my arithmetic isn't very fast and I think it's fine to do it in two steps. So if we take n squared here, we're gonna get zero, one, four. So three times three is nine, so that is equal to zero. So four times four is 16. So 16 mod nine is seven, but seven is the same thing as negative two from this equivalence down here. So we'll just replace this with negative two. Okay, great. And now we have uh, negative four. Well, this is gonna be the same thing as positive four because we're squaring it. So this will be negative two, zero, four, and then one. Now what we can do is just multiply these first two columns and that'll give us n cubed. So zero times zero is obviously zero. One times one is one. Two times four is eight, but eight is congruent to negative one mod nine. Three times zero is zero. Four times negative two is negative eight, but again, that is one mod nine. Negative four times negative two is eight, but that's negative one mod nine. Here we get another zero. Here we get a one. 
because we have negative two times four, that's negative eight, which is one mod nine. And then here we have uh, negative one. So notice whatever we started with, if we started with zero mod nine up to eight mod nine, when we cubed it, we only got zero mod nine, one mod nine, or negative one mod nine. Those were the only possibilities. So that establishes this next tool. And now we're ready to dive into our solution. So let's go ahead and rewrite this a little bit. So the first thing that I want to do is notice that I can write x plus y as 3 minus z, just by subtracting z from both sides of that first equation. Then I can do something similar to the second equation, x cubed plus y cubed equals 3 minus z squared. And now that may not seem super helpful, but we can factor x cubed plus y cubed. There's like a standard factorization for a sum of cubes, a sum of two cubes. That isn't quite present for a sum of three cubes. You'd have to hack something together. So we'll go ahead and use that. So I'm going to use the fact that x cubed plus y cubed equals x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. So let's go ahead and replace x cubed plus y cubed and x plus y with what we have on this other side. So we have x cubed plus y cubed is 3 minus z cubed equals 3 minus z times, and I'm just going to collapse this all into one thing. Maybe I'll call this like capital A. But now notice we have 3 minus z cubed is a multiple of 3 minus z, which means 3 minus z divides 3 minus z cubed. But we might as well like multiply by a negative 1 to make that look a little nicer. So in other words, we can write z minus 3 divides z cubed minus 3. Great. And then also, now I want to give a little motivation for this. We're going to use this first tool here where a is equal to z cubed minus 3. And then we want to pick um, b and y carefully in order to transform this a little bit. And the thing that we will do is let's go ahead and pick b equal to z minus 3. So definitely z minus 3 divides z minus 3. And now we can pick y. And what we want to do is pick y to be some polynomial in z that will cancel most of this out as we do a simplification. So the thing that works here is z squared plus 3z plus 9. Good. And now what I want to notice is that z minus 3 divides uh, z minus 3, which tells us that z minus 3 will divide z cubed minus 3 plus z minus 3 times z squared plus 3z plus 9. So what I'm doing is just I'm adding two multiples of z minus 3 together, again, using this first tool. But I mean, I'll let you guys check all of the details, but this polynomial right here is constructed very carefully, so a bunch of stuff cancels out. And in fact, what we have is the right-hand side of that divisibility relationship cancels down to z minus 3 divides 24. OK, good. But the fact that z minus 3 divides 24 gives us a bunch of possibilities for z. So that means that z minus 3 equals plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 8, plus minus 12, and finally plus minus 24. But now if we add 3 to both sides, that gives us all of the possibilities for z. Okay, and in fact, there wasn't anything special about z here. We could have had the same thing for x or y. We would have just had to rewrite this so that it was like 3 minus x and 3 minus y and 3 minus x cubed and 3 minus y cubed and so on and so forth. So that means that x 
minus three and y minus three are elements of this set as well, which gives us only a finite number of possibilities for x, y, and z. All right, I'll go ahead and clean this up, and then we'll start at the top of the board with the possibilities for x, y, and z. So on the last board, we ended up with the possible values of x, y, and z. We wrote it a little bit differently, but it's equivalent to this list that we have right here. So x, y, and z all have to come from the set negative 21, negative 9, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, 15, and 27. Now the next thing that I want to do is notice that by this second tool, we know that x cubed, y cubed, and z cubed are all congruent to 0 plus minus 1 mod 9. But now that means if we take their sum, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, we can only get a certain fairly small finite number of solutions. So this is either negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, or 3 mod 9. So we've got a couple of solutions for 0 mod 9. Notice we could have like 0 and then plus 1 and minus 1 for these uh, y cubes and z cubes. That would work. We could maybe have something else too, like 0, 0, 0. But the one that we are interested in which is this case where the sum is congruent to 3 mod 9 because that is our original problem, only has a unique solution. And that unique solution is x cubed, y cubed, and z cubed are congruent to 1 mod 9. That's the only way to get that out of this first requirement. So let's go ahead and write that down. We have x cubed. So that's going to be congruent to y cubed, congruent to z cubed, which is congruent to 1 mod 9. Now the next thing that I want to do is recall from the chart that we had when we were proving this case down here, um, we noticed the following. So I didn't point this out when we were there, so you can pause and look back if you need to. But the solutions to the equation n cubed is congruent to 1 mod 9. So in other words, the only time we got um, a 1 out of the cube of another of a number mod 9 were n is congruent to 1, 4, or 7 mod 9. Those were the only possibilities. So I want to point out that this can actually be written in a more elegant way by noticing that 1, 4, 7 are all congruent to 1 mod 3. So that means that tells us that n is congruent to 1 mod 3. So that's the only way to get um, 1 mod 9 when you cube it. So that means that x, y, and z are all 1 mod 3. And that severely restricts our possibilities for x, y, and z down to a manageable number. So let's see which of these numbers are 1 mod 3. So notice negative 5 is because it's 1 more than negative 6, which is a multiple of 3. 1 is because it's 1 more than 0, which is a multiple of 3. 4 is, and then 7 is as well, because both of those are 1 more than a multiple of 3. So those are the only possibilities for x, y, and z. Negative 5, 1, 4, and 7. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the board, and then we'll finish it off. So we've worked our problem down to this following point. We have x, y, and z are in the set negative 5, 1, 4, 7. But that's a small enough set that we can just guess and check until we see what combinations give us this 3 for the sum and 3 for the sum of cubes. So I'll maybe leave it to you guys to check this, but the only possibilities that drop out of this are x equals y equals z equals 1. So we probably could have guessed that solution from the very beginning. And the other possibility is x, y, z equals negative 5, 4, 4, and permutations. But then the fact that we have 4 twice means there aren't that many permutations. We could have 4 minus 5, 4. And we could have 4, 4 minus 5. So there we have 1, 2, 3, 4 total solutions for um, choices for x, y, and z. And that's a good place to stop.